necessary to create a tension in the mind so that individuals could rise from the bondage of myths and half-truths. So must we create that kind of tension in society that will help men rise from the dark depths of prejudice and racism. So if you look at Dr. King's practice as a leader, of course, many of us immediately think of the man with the dream. And by the way, if you've never seen the I Have a Dream speech, you can watch it very easily. They do. It's about 27 minutes long. It's brilliant. And of course, in the middle of it, he starts talking about his vision. Which, by the way, is a vision of freedom. It, it's not really a speech about race, although the context is all about race and racial inequality. His core vision, because he's a, he's a preacher, right? His core vision is about what it means as a human being to be free. But, if you look at his practice, what did Dr. King spend most of his life doing? Inspired by Gandhi, as he would say, we must dramatize the current reality. That's why protest marches. You know, he studied Gandhi extensively. Gandhi had used this strategy brilliantly to bring down the British Empire in India. People with no power, no money, no influence, ultimately, you know, India became a free country, because they become masterful <coughs> and engaging the system so everybody could see how the system was presently working. Hence, all the protest marks, marches and demonstrations in the South by <coughs> and his colleagues. And the whole nonviolent change approach has one key aim, to dramatize the present situation. So all of a sudden, that's why uh, media was so important, why they had to get TV there. They had to have people see that when these people tried to ride in the bus, they got arrested. Now, how many people knew that that would happen? Well, if you live in the Deep South, you had no clue. That was an aspect of reality that was invisible to them. Their job was to make it visible, which in the context of the dream, created a kind of tension in society. So this is not a new idea. A very old insight. And masterful leaders like King kind of live it, embody it. Without the vision, nothing happens. But without being in touch with current reality, nothing happens. The people who just have lovely visions, they're the ones who give visionaries bad names. Right? They have all these lovely visions and dreams, but no, no, please don't bother me about what is. People who are just deeply in touch with reality. I mean, I know this kind of the academic world. The academic world is full of people who are brilliant analysts. They can tell you all about reality. But most of them, very little in the way of real vision or very little in their work. It's not part of their work. They're not visionaries. They're analysts. So the whole point of creative tension is, yeah, do you need analysis? Absolutely. Do you need vision? Absolutely. But what you really need is both. Now, there's a variety of kind of subtleties to the principle. Get the basic idea? It's really simple. Again, Fritz's genius is he takes, that makes it really, really simple, really clear. But there are subtleties. One subtlety is that the energy in the creative process comes from this gap. How do you generate the gap? Well, obviously, when you start to articulate a vision, you generate that energy. But just as much, when you start to see more clearly the current reality, that also generates a vision. So there's two fundamental potential. There's two fundamental ways to generate creative tension. One is by articulating and getting committed to a vision, and the other is about getting clearer about what is. So to put it really simply, the two sources of creative tension are aspiration and the truth. This is why the truth and telling the truth and being honest and being able to talk openly about how things really are which is a huge problem in most organizations, right? Why do we have whistleblowers? We've all heard this term, whistleblower, right? We have whistleblowers because we create organization cultures where it's actually very risky to tell the truth. You put yourself at risk to tell the truth. You say, well, well why? Because you create a culture that has a big investment in a story about what is rather than people's actual experience about what is. Okay? So this whole creative tension can boil down to two ideas we've all heard. 
the power of vision and the power of the truth. And you put them together and you've got great attention. You start to see how they're both essential in a larger sense. And this is why Fritz uses the term structure. He says this is the transcendent structure that creators <coughs> in existence. A transcendent structure where there is a vision, there is a commitment to the truth. And consequently, there is creative tension. 